Hi, my name is Bart Piella. I'm a technical marketing specialist here on the deep learning team at Cognex. Today, I'm gonna to take you through setting up the Vidi Detect tool. So in terms of my setup here, I have the D900 and it's hooked up to 24 volt power and the ethernet uh, cable is hooked right up to my computer. My computer is GPU enabled, which allows me to train the deep learning tools. And the other thing I have here is uh, a USB dongle, which is what has our security licenses on it. Uh, in the application we're going to tackle today, we have a textile. So this is what the good textile looks like. And here's what some defects look like. And the objective of the application is to use the Vidi Detect tool to pick up these defects. So with that, I'm just going to jump right into it. The first thing I'm going to do is put my good part under the camera. And this camera's already been focused and all the image formation is set up. So all I have to do is you know, give it a couple triggers. We can put it in a live mode and, and show what the, uh, what the textile looks like. But the first thing I want to do is I want to collect images of both my good and bad parts. So I'm going to use the film strip down here. I'm going to click this record button. And with that, every time I trigger, I'll get a new image in my film strip. So I'm just going to go through that process for maybe 10 or 20 uh, images of good parts. And you'll notice that I'm rotating uh, with every image, because in this mat application, um, basically the, the textile pattern can appear in, in any orientation. And so once I have 15 or 20 images of that, I'll also want to capture some images of my defects. So here you can see what a defect looks like. I'll do the same thing here. I'll capture a couple different um, defect types. Let's get some of those small ones in there. Great. So, so now I have a good representation of what good and bad look like in my application. Uh, the next thing I'll want to do in this film strip is just to append uh, some descriptors to my images. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first one. I'm going to scroll all the way to my last good image, which is right here. And I use the Shift key and click. And that'll select those images. And if I right click, I can rename selected frames, and I can prepend a string. So I'm going to call these good, because this is all my good images. And you can see that that file name was added. And I'll do the same for my bads. So I'll select all my bad images, right click, rename selected frames, and I'll prepend uh, the word bad here. And this will be useful here in a second when we get to the Vidi tool. So now uh, I'm good with my images. The next thing I want to do is I want to drop in a Vidi tool into the spreadsheet. So that's as easy as going over to the, uh, the toolbox here, selecting Vidi Detect, dragging it over to the, an empty cell in the, in the spreadsheet. And just like that, we can open up the Vidi editor. The first thing I want to do uh, before I do that, though, is to set the region. So just like all the other tools in Inside Explorer, uh, the Vidi Detect tool has a property sheet where you can change some settings. And I'll set my region, so this is my inspection region, I'll set it to be most of the image. I'm going to focus on the middle of the image. So once I have that set, I can hit that green checkbox. And now I'm ready to go into the video editor. So clicking this button will open up a new tab for me in the interface. And to anyone who's used to working with Vidi, this is basically exactly what Vidi looks like, except now it's within the Insight framework. So now what I want to do is I want to grab all these images that are recorded. I can turn off that record button before I forget. I'm going to grab all of these and just drag and drop them right into Vidi. And for the time being, I'm done with this film strip, so I'll close that out so I have uh, more screen space. And you can see that that region that we set in the spreadsheet has already been applied. The other thing you'll notice is that up here, I have the file names. So you can see that that good and bad um, naming is already in Vidi. So I can use that to my advantage when it comes to labeling images. Um, I can use a single quote syntax and type that string that I'm looking for, which is capital G-O-O-D. And what that'll do is that'll filter out and display in this pane only those images that have that file name. And so this makes it really quick for me to label um, these images as good. Let's bring that over here. So I'm labeling these as good. And so you'll get that green checkbox or that green flag up at the top right of the image. And I can do the same for the bad images. So just type in that bad with the single quote syntax and label these as bad. That there. And so now, with just a couple clicks, I've basically have labeled all the images for Vidi. And so just to scroll through here, right, I have the red flags on my bad images and the green flags on my good images. Next, what I want to do is I want to set my feature size. 
So this is the magnifying glass, you can think of it, that Vidi looks through at, to, to understand uh, your images. So an easy way to get a good estimate for my feature size is I can use this bubble here and I can just drag it onto the screen on my smallest defect and just approximately size it to, to what that defect is. And if I open up my tool parameters here, you'll see that feature size, you know, as I adjust this, that changes the feature size parameter over here. So I'll put that back to, to 60, that was a good number. Um, the other thing I can set from here is my training selection. And so what this is, is the split between uh, what Vidi takes to be training information versus testing information. And so in this case, I'm gonna use 50% of my images and in the case of a Vidi Detect tool, all it's doing is taking the images that were labeled as good. So I have, you know, we can, let's just do this real quick. I can pull up all my good images. So I have 18 good images. And so with that 50% split, basically what Vidi will do is take nine of those images for training and the other nine will be used for testing. The other thing I wanna uh, account for is the fact that I have rotation in my application, but I don't have uh, an example of, you know, every angle uh, that that's possible for this application. So what I can do is I can add a rotation perturbation. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna augment my training information to include those images uh, at any rotation, at any angle. So what that does is Vidi's gonna basically uh, synthetically create those rotated images and train on them so that the application, the tool, the model learns uh, what rotation looks like. And so with that, all I have to do now is click the train button. And now Vidi's gonna take all those labeled images and train on what a good textile looks like. And depending on your GPU and depending on the application, this can take somewhere between three and five minutes. Okay, so now our Vidi tool is done training. Let's go through the results. So what you'll see uh, after you have a trained tool, you'll see this border around your image and those are Vidi's predictions for whether that image is good or bad. You'll also see a score um, if you open up the database overview, you'll see this uh, score histogram. And basically what this is showing is in green are all the images you labeled good and are in red are the ones you labeled bad. And what you hope for is you hope that Vidi can separate them by score. You have this big gap between them. That's a good thing. Um, in this case, uh, the Vidi detect tool, the way it works is since it's a, de a defect detection tool, uh, it's gonna score images where defects are present. It's gonna score those higher. And so if we go through and just look at all the images, uh, let's go and find some defect images. So you'll see here, uh, let's make this a little smaller. Uh, you'll see here that the defects are being highlighted uh, in red. So the other thing I can adjust this threshold here uh, to make video a little less picky about what it's calling a defect. And you'll see when I do that, it just draws the, the defect regions a little smaller. So I'll set those uh, that tolerance there, a threshold there and uh, we'll go back to the spreadsheet. And I can put uh, a sample under the camera, give it a trigger, and now I have a Vidi Detect tool in the spreadsheet. So one uh, really useful thing in order to get data out of that tool, what I can do is I can right click here and I can use this insert getters command. And what that's gonna do, and I actually wanna do that when there's defects present. So let me just put a, a, a sample with defects, give that a trigger. You can see when I click here, you get the graphics. Uh, right click again, insert getters. What that's gonna do, it's gonna populate these cells automatically with all the functions that get data from, uh, from the Vidi tool. So you can see here for each of those defects that I have in this particular image, I have the area, the perimeter, its location in the image. Um, so I can use this data for other vision tools. I can use some logic on it and I can do whatever sort of things I wanna do in the spreadsheet with that information. Um, so what we're gonna do we want to now start thinking about what our HMI is going to look like for the user in production. Um, the uh, Insight Vision Suite ships with two default web pages. If I go to web pages here, I can double click on main. So this is what the default web page looks like. It has this great space where I can uh, put some other data. So let's go in and publish some, some more data to this web page. So back in the spreadsheet, Let's say I wanted to publish the score. So this is my uh, Vidi score for the probability of the or confidence of there being a defect in the image. So if I just right click and publish, I'll get a score 
uh, here, and it'll also publish in my tags. And now if I go back to my main web page, uh, let's pull up the tag browser. So I go to View Tags, and there's my tag browser. I can search this for score, and it's going to be in here, score. It's under my inspection task in the spreadsheet score. And all I, can, all I have to do now is drag that onto my web HMI. And so now I can get data basically published to my web HMI really easily. So let's go do that with one more item here. Um, let's say I want to enable the user to change the graphics of the Viddy tool. So what I can do is I can go into this property sheet here, grab this whole show uh, property, and plunk it in my spreadsheet. OK with that. And then I can right click and publish that. And it's going to be by default called show. I go back to my web HMI. And now I can search my tags for show. And in a similar way, you know, drag and drop it into wherever I want it on my web HMI. Now let's put it there for now. So the last thing I want to do, this web HMI comes with a live film strip. And I need to assign a watch cell to that. So that's pretty simple. I'll go over to my past getter from the Viddy tool, right click on that, and select Watch Cell. I'm going to set that as my watch cell. OK, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and put my camera online and see how it's doing. OK, so now my camera's online. You can see that that score is updating. Uh, right now, I don't have any graphics shown. I can pause this film strip and review the images. Um, so let's go ahead and show some graphics. So there we go. Move this around to different uh, defect types. Let's show some of those smaller defects. You can see that he's picking those up. Let's spin this around just to see how that works. Awesome. Let's go ahead and put in a good sample. Let's see what it does there. So you can see it's passing those regions. Excellent. And I can pause on this and review any of these images if I wanted to. The other thing I can do, I can pull this up. Since this is a web HMI, I can pull it up in a web browser. So to do that, I can just go back to the shell of Insight Vision Suite and click this Open HMI button. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull up my default browser automatically uh, with the right IP address. And we'll see the same, uh, the same web HMI that we set up before. Here's this. And just to, for good measure, we can throw this in here and show how it's highlighting defects. OK, so just to recap on our uh, demonstration of the Viddy Detect tool, the workflow steps that we did, first we collected uh, images, and then we imported those into the Viddy editor, where we labeled them for Viddy so that Viddy knows what's good and bad. We set some tool parameters, and we trained the tool and reviewed the results to make sure that Viddy can separate the good from the bad. Once we knew that our Viddy tool was working, we went back into the spreadsheet and used the insert getters function to get all the results data back into the spreadsheet. Once that data is there, we can do some things in the WebHMI with that data, like control the film strip or publish the score. From here, a user could spend more time with the WebHMI and customize it to whatever the need is in the application. Uh, another thing that you could consider doing is setting up the communications, whether that's to the PLC or to uh, discrete IO. Thanks for watching.